Okay, hi everybody. Um, I am doing this recorded lecture um, for chapter four. Um, to get to a few more of these chapter four exercises that we were not able to do in class. Um, unfortunately, going over the exam um, from last week took up the uh, the lion's share of class time, so we didn't get much time um, to do some of these exercises together. So I just wanted to go through and get a little bit more practice with you. So I'm going to share my screen, um, get this pulled up, and I'll post this um, Excel spreadsheet when I post uh, the recorded lecture um, as well. But um, the first couple sheets down here, and so you see here at the bottom, we have a few different exercises picked out. Um, these first couple sheets, this overhead rate and then this adjusting overhead, are actually, um, these couple exercises are from another textbook um, that I have, um, but, but I just like the practice that we get with them. Um, and then adjusting overhead, this is from that journal entry um, practice uh, that we did and I want to show us uh, or show you guys how we adjust this overhead account. So anyway, um, factory overhead rate. So we talked about in chapter four the predetermined overhead rate, but we haven't gotten a chance to practice it um, together yet. So um, the predetermined overhead rate, this is how we apply overhead um, to jobs uh, throughout the job order cost accounting process. So we will talk about this a little bit more when we get into um, chapter five. Chapter five, um, or excuse me, chapter six, I guess. Chapter six is about um, job order costing. Um, so we do get into it. Let's see, is it chapter six? My goodness, I'm looking here at the book. Um, Anyway, I thought that we talk a little bit more about it um, in um, job order costing and then also um, process costing. We use to uh, determine or we have to determine these factory overhead rates. So generally speaking, the formula is um, budgeted overhead. Divided by. little divided by sign in here, divided by some activity base. Um, equals our predetermined overhead rate. Okay, and so we'll see this. We're gonna plug some numbers in here um, and get some practice with it. And, and this could be, and so we said like in the um, chapter four recorded lecture that this, but this overhead that we're using as the numerator um, here, this overhead could be, um, could be based on like last year's numbers, for example. Um, it, it could be based more on like I've put here budgeted overhead. Um, you know, we could use historical cost data, like what happened last year or what's happened over the previous two years or whatever, right? So we could use historical cost um, data for the numerator for that overhead amount. And then the activity base, you know, there's a, a few, there are a few different activity bases um, that your book talks about that we could use. In this particular example, um, we're looking at using direct labor hours as the activity base or, or excuse me, um, direct labor costs as the activity base and uh, direct material cost as the activity base. But your book also talks about using direct labor hours as the activity base as well. So there's a few different ways that it could be um, calculated. Ultimately, we want the best estimation possible, right? Because we're going to apply this overhead to jobs um, and to, to our manufacturing processes as as the costs move through the system. So um, this one says, a company incurred the following manufacturing costs this period. So we've got direct labor 468,000, 
direct materials 390,000 and factory overhead 117,000. Compute its overhead cost as a percent of direct labor and direct material, uh, yeah, and number two, direct materials, express your answers as percent rounded to the nearest whole number. So in number one, if we're going to use direct labor as the um, activity base, we're gonna take factory overhead, 117,000, divided by the direct labor cost, which is what, 468,000, which then equals, and you know, I just realized I didn't bring my darn calculator um, in here in the office with me, um, which then equals what, equals 117000 divided by 468000. 0.25 or as a percent, 25%, right? 0.25 or if we were changing that to a percent, 25%. So what that means, you know, again, um, if we have a predetermined overhead rate of 25%, um, that means that for, um, every dollar, so for every dollar of labor costs, we will apply 25 cents of overhead cost, is what that means, right? If we have a predetermined overhead rate of, of 0.25, which would be 25%, for every dollar of labor cost, we'll apply 25 cents of overhead cost. Okay, so for number two, uh, if we're basing it on direct material cost instead, then we'd take 117,000, uh, divided by uh, 390,000, which equals, so equals what, 117,000 divided by 390,000, 0.3 or 30%, right? So if we're basing it on direct material cost instead, this means that for every dollar of material, and I guess I should be more specific, every dollar of direct material cost, we will apply, oh, hot dog we will apply 30 cents of overhead, right? So, and this was direct labor. I guess I should be a little bit more specific, direct labor. We will apply 25 cents up here. Okay, I don't know, maybe it's redundant putting the decimal and also cents, but anyway. Just to give you an idea, again, that's how the predetermined overhead rate is calculated. It's not real difficult uh, calculation, but nonetheless, we did not get practice with it. And I know you guys have to do that um, for your quiz. I'm not, I can't remember exactly on the exam, but definitely your chapter four quiz, you have to calculate this um, predetermined overhead rate. Okay, so now, this next one, um, which again, isn't a, a long problem, it's just a little short one here, um, but it gets us some practice applying overhead to these three jobs based on the material cost. So this one says, on March 1, a dressmaker starts work on three custom design wedding dresses. 
The company uses job order costing and applies overhead to each job or dress at a rate of 40% of direct material costs. So again, that means that the predetermined overhead rate is 40%, right? That's the predetermined overhead rate that we have decided, you know, based on either historical data or our budgets, uh, we're going to charge uh, each, each job, in this case, each wedding dress, right? Um, during the month, the jobs use direct materials as shown below. Compute the amount of overhead applied to each of the three jobs. Okay, so if our predetermined overhead rate <laughs> is 40%, um, so we're going to multiply each of these by 40%, right? Um, so then we'll say predetermined overhead rate, 40%. Trying to think about the best way. I don't, I guess I'll just do it this way. Job one, if we take um, the material cost 5,000 times the predetermined overhead rate, we're going to charge what to this job? Ah, I have to go grab my, my calculator, darn it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, so 5,000 times 40%. So we're going to apply 2,000 um, overhead to this job. Okay, job two. Uh, material cost is 7,000 times 40% means that we're going to apply, let's see, 7,000 times 0.4. We're gonna apply 2,800 of labor cost to, or excuse me, of overhead cost to this job. And then job three, 1,500 times 40%. We're gonna apply 600 of overhead cost um, to job three. So, you know, again, these are the material cost. We're applying overhead based on 40% of materials. Um, so then, you know, again, we would take our, um, our material cost times that predetermined overhead rate and that determines how much overhead, right? That's what we're doing, how much overhead is applied to the three jobs. Okay, so I wanted to get a little practice. Again, the, the calculations are not difficult, um, but I know at least you have to calculate the predetermined overhead rate um, on, the, um, on the quiz. So I wanted to make sure we got practice with that. Okay, the other thing that I wanna make sure that we get some practice with is um, adjusting this factory overhead account. So. I'm going to put the T account in here. So, <laughs> and of course my fingers can't type. Um, I'm going to put the T account in here. And so we looked at a, a T account um, in the recorded lecture and we said in the recorded lecture, and I'm just setting up the, the T account here for us. We said in the recorded lecture that when we're thinking about this factory overhead T account, the debit side, is actual factory overhead. The credit side is applied factory overhead, okay? And at the end of the year, um, and, and maybe it's something if we close our books every month, we'd even wanna, although I don't know, shoring it up every month seems a little excessive to me. I don't, maybe, um, you know, maybe every quarter, and then when we close our books for the whole year. Um, I, I'm not sure if every month might be, because the thing with factory overhead is that, um, you know, the factory overhead costs, like we, we think about like, um, 
indirect materials, indirect labor, um, factory supervisor salary, rent or mortgage on the factory, um, depreciation on the factory, factory supplies used, utilities on the factory, right? We don't have all of those costs in necessarily, um, you know, every month. Uh, so that's why we come up with a predetermined overhead rate because that looks at factory overhead costs for the entire year and then and then allocates those overhead costs over some activity base as we just saw on the on the previous exercises that we did so um really this is something probably that we would shore up um you know not maybe not not so frequently as like every month but maybe on a quarterly and an annual basis and, and i don't know maybe a bigger company might want to do it every month too but the point is that you know some of these um some of these factory overhead expenses we don't have in on a month to month basis you know maybe we only get get the bill once a year or we only get the bill you know a few times a year or something like that so that's kind of the point of coming up with that predetermined overhead rate right um and then in addition you know not all the overhead costs are necessarily you know easily traceable to the finished good or easily associated with the finished good so then we get we calculate that predetermined overhead rate to allocate it um to the production processes or, or two different jobs so anyway i wanted us to get a little bit of practice with um shoring up this this account so we did these uh journal entries together and i can't remember now i think i did this recorded lecture i did these journal entries um you know, way back in chapter one, and we got practice with doing this together. So um, I'm not going to do the journal entries again, but I'm going to go through and I'm going to isolate the factory overhead, um, you know, any debits or credits that impact factory overhead, and then we'll look at how we um, shore up this account. So the first one, and I'm not sure why I had um, these ones um highlighted but i'm going to take that highlighting off now we're going to highlight factory overhead okay so here's our first factory overhead um entry so this is a debit to factory overhead so 19,200 okay we did that one um here we have another uh debit to factory overhead 12,000 okay we did that one and here now letter d we have another debit to factory overhead 11475 okay did this one and so in all three of these again when we're thinking about that factory overhead account these are actual factory overhead costs right one of them up here is for indirect materials right here's for indirect labor this is for other actual overhead costs right so again when we debit factory overhead those are our actual overhead costs and then now when we credit which we're going to see in the next one that's what we're applying to work in process so now we see a credit here uh four seven uh excuse me forty seven thousand five hundred And I don't know why I had this one highlighted. <clears throat> I think this is the last factory overhead thing though. Um, yeah, so that's our last one that impacts factory overhead. So let's foot both of these uh, balances. So we've got, what do we have here? So we have equals the sum of these okay so we've got 42,675 and we've applied 47,500 so looking at this right now we are over applied okay so we've only had actuals of 42,675 but we've applied 47,000 500 right so so then what this means is as of now we are over applied right so then if we were going to adjust this account we would need another debit um to 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 shore it up right we would need another debit um to get that to equal 
because that's that's what I mean by shoring it up is when we adjust this account and um, we want to even it out at the end of the year, we want to shore it up, right? So to do that, um, we need a debit of, let's see, equals 47,500 minus 42,675. So we need to do an adjusting entry for 4825. And so this adjusting entry would be debit factory overhead um, 4825 credit cost of goods sold. <laughs> Cogs is what that would look like. Okay. Um you know, again, just like we talked about in the book, we can be over applied or we can be under applied. Um, in, in this case, we applied more, 47,500, than what our actuals were. So we're over applied. So then that reduces cost of goods sold. Remember, cost of goods sold increases with the debit, decreases with the credit. So by doing this journal entry to even out the factory overhead account, we're reducing cost of goods sold. We didn't need to apply that much basically, right? Based on just this data. Um, it, it, anyway, I wanted us to get a little bit of practice with, um, you know, looking at the actual versus the applied and how we would, um, how we would adjust that account. Okay. So this exercise, um, 4-5, we actually did uh, do the high-low method um, to this exercise in class together. Um, and so the high-low method, uh, remember we set it up, um, the high cost, no, oh, jeez, <laughs> high cost, minus low cost and then we said divided by divided by high activity minus low activity equals our variable cost per unit. So that was like the first formula um, that, that we used. And then the other formula, total cost, right? So our total costs are made up of fixed cost and variable cost. And we get that variable cost by taking variable cost per unit, which we calculate in the previous formula, times the number of units. Okay, so we'll do this again real quick. We did this in class together. We're gonna do it again real quick. And then I'm gonna um, create the graph, which we did not get to do in class together. So. On this one, we set it out, and remember, we're looking at high activity as, uh, you know, to determine what numbers we're plugging in here. We're looking at the high and low activity levels, okay? So we see here, and I forget what months these are. Let's see, so this is January, February, March, April, May, June, right, are our numbers. So we're looking here, we can see June is our high, that's when we had the highest activity. So then we're gonna plug in, um, oh, and where's our low? Here, January's our low, this is our low. So then we're gonna plug in our numbers. Okay, so the cost in June, 22,000, minus the low cost, that's the cost in January, um, 10,000. So that's our numerator, right? Um, high cost minus low cost, that's our numerator. And then we're gonna say divided by
high activity. So again, the high activity in June was 1,700 minus the low activity in January was 700. And that's gonna give us our variable cost per unit. Um, in, in this case, if we plug our numbers in, we end up with, what if we simplify? We end up with, um, and I'll just press enter. So then we end up with um, 22,000 minus 10,000. So 12,000 divided by 1,700 uh, minus 700, 1,000 units equals $12 variable cost per unit, right? And then once we have that variable cost per unit, we can plug it down here into our formula. Remember the point of the high-low method is to separate those mixed cost or what your book also refers to as semi-variable cost, right? <laughs> semi-variable cost are mixed cost. Um, costs that have a fixed and variable element, semi-variable cost. So um, now we plug it in here. And so just like we saw together, you know, we could plug the numbers in using the high level. If we plug the numbers in using the high level, then we're going to use these numbers, right? And so I'll just highlight this, okay? If we use the high level, which is what we're gonna do, then we're gonna plug our numbers in here, okay? So then total cost at the high level, 22,000 equals fixed cost. That's what, we don't know what fixed costs are. That's what we're trying to solve for. But we can calculate variable cost by taking that variable cost per unit times the number of units at the high level, right? If we, if we um, want to and we want to double check ourselves just like we double checked in, uh, or just like we said in class um, and we double checked in class as well, we could plug our low numbers in to this formula as well. If we plugged our low numbers in, it would be what, 10,000 equals, again, we're saying we don't know what fixed costs are, that's what we're trying to solve for, but we can calculate variable cost by taking our variable cost per unit, $12 per unit, times the number of units at that level of activity. Okay, so then we end up with um, what on this side? We end up with 22,000 equals fixed cost plus um, 12 times 1,700, 20,400. Okay. And so if we subtract 20,400 from both sides, we end up with fixed cost equals 1,600. And again, we can, remember, fixed cost should remain the same at any level of activity. So we can confirm that this is the right number by also plugging the numbers into the low level. So if we do that, um, take this one step further, we end up with 10,000 equals fixed cost plus what 12 times 7 is 8400 12 times 700 is 8400 so then again fixed cost equal 1600 right we subtract 8400 from both sides fixed cost equals 1600 right so we did that part um, in class together what i wanted to get to that we were not able to get to is I had uh, I wanted to get to doing one of these graphs together, um, and so I just want to show you guys how to do this. I was actually I brought in graph paper on Monday, but then I quickly realized we weren't going to have time to do it in class together. So I just want to show you. Some of you I'm sure have already made graphs or charts in Excel before, so this is not going to be new to you. Um, but if we highlight this data. It brings up this quick analysis tool, right? We can go to charts 
And so this is the type of chart that we want, right? This is the type of chart that it talks about um, in, in the textbook, the scatter graph, okay? So we enter this chart and there's all different kinds of things that we can do with it. I'm gonna put it down here a little bit. So there's all different um, kinds of things that, that we can do with the chart. So we could add, you know, data labels, for example, if, if, if we wanted to. Um, we can add access titles if we wanted to. Um, this is the total, um, total cost, right? And then this one down here are the uh, machine hours. Okay, and so, oh, and we can change, um, we can change the chart uh, title if we want to, you know, whatever, you guys pr probably know that stuff already. Um, but what I wanted to look at is this trend line. Um, so, you know, if we go to chart elements, we can also click on a trend line. You can see it puts the trend line there, and then we wanna look at more options. And, once you're on here, you know, it gives you some different trend line options, the color, um, you know, different effects and things like that. But we want to look at the equation. And then if we're thinking about the least squared uh, regression um, method that they talk about in our book, we also want to see this R value. Um, and we'll just write these to the side. So um, the equation and maybe they'll, oh, they'll just let me copy it nice. Well, actually I could maybe just move it over, move it down where we can see it. <laughs> okay, so um, just like it tells us in our book, if we're looking at um, page 189, um, the way they show us this formula in the book is y equals a plus bx. And so y equals the total semi-variable, which again means mixed, the total semi-variable cost. Um, a equals the total fixed cost. Um, X is the activity level. And B is the variable cost per unit. Right. So um, really the way that the formula is the way it's showing it to us right now is is kind of um, is like this instead. <laughs> Bx plus a. Um, so, you know, in your book, um, it has it, you know, y equals a plus b times x. Right. Um, but the way that it's actually showing us the formula right here, um, they have it um, kind of flip-flopped, right? <laughs> um, the variable cost per unit uh, times the number of units. Um, and you can see with this that it is, you know, just like our book tells us, the um, least squares regress, uh, regression method and using the formula is, a more sophisticated method in as much as that it usually takes statistical software um, or Excel uh, packages like this to be able to um, calculate this. I mean, this isn't a formula that we could come up with like just by the naked eye and doing the chart in, in class together on paper, right? Um, but it does just kind of show you how we can create um, one of these charts and then some of the options that we have here. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that. Okay, 
exercise 4-8. This is another one I wanted to get practice with because we are um, allocating cost to different departments and we're going to see this more, especially when we get into budgeting. This is really how we prepare um, a good amount of our budgets, especially when there are um, cost allocations that are necessary, right? So I wanted to get some practice with this. So this one um, is exercise 4-8. It says, a manufacturing company has two service and two production departments. Building and maintenance, or uh, building maintenance and factory office are the service departments. Remember, like we learned in the um, PowerPoint in uh, reading chapter four, service departments service the entire organization, right? Um, so they help out every other department, basically, right? We use the example of like IT is a service department, accounting is a service department, um, human resources is a service department building maintenance and factory office, in this case, our um, service department. So um, the production departments are assembly and machining. And then it says the following data have been estimated for next year's operation. So for assembly, we expect direct labor hours of 80,000. For machining, we expect direct labor hours of 40,000. And then floor space occupied, um, factory office occupies 10% assembly 40% and then machining 50%. Um, and then it says the direct charges identified with each of the departments are as follows. So we've got um, building and maintenance, factory office, assembly and machining. Again, those are the direct charges. And then we're gonna have to allocate um, the other costs, right? So it says, um, well, we have to allocate building maintenance and factory office. We're gonna have to allocate to assembly and machining. So it says the building maintenance department services all departments of the company and its costs are allocated using floor space occupied while factory office costs are allocated to assembly and machining on the basis of direct labor hours. So number one, distribute the service department cost using the direct method. Okay, so we have, you know, again, we have to allocate building maintenance and factory office. We need to allocate to um, assembly and machining, okay? So assembly and machining, which I know, of course, I'm gonna spell it wrong. Assembly and machining. Okay, and so we can list their direct costs. Assembly has direct cost of 378,000. Machining has direct cost of 328,000, right? So those are the direct cost. But now we need to allocate the allocated costs. Now we need to allocate um, the building maintenance and then um, the factory office, right? So um, building maintenance are allocated and it tells it here. Um, the building maintenance department services all departments of the company and its costs are um, allocated using floor space occupied, right? So floor space occupied. Um, basically, we're going to, because um, what we've got, and it tells us floor space occupied up here. So assembly occupies 40%, machining occupies 50%. Okay, so then, building maintenance for um, assembly, because assembly um, is 40%, right? Um, and it is, and, and the way they show us the formula, um, you know, the difference between the, the direct method and the sequential distribution method. <laughs> the way they show us the formula in the um, book 
is because assembly is 40% of the 90% to calculate this, we're taking the 90,000 in building maintenance cost times 40 of 90% is how we're calculating this. So um, on our calculators, the part that is gonna get allocated to assembly, 40 divided by 90 times 90,000. Okay, so then that would be 40,000 is what's gonna get allocated to assembly. You know, again, we're not, we're, all, we're not allocating any more to um, factory office, right? And in fact, um, we're gonna end up allocating these factory office, this 171,000, we're gonna end up allocating that to assembly and machining as well. So when we're allocating these building and maintenance costs, even though factory office takes up 10%, um, we're not allocating any of the building and maintenance to factory office, right? We're allocating all of it, building and maintenance and factory office to assembly and machining. So that's why we're kind of leaving their 10% out, if, if, if you will. Okay, so building and maintenance um, allocated to assembly that way. And then to machining, we're going to allocate it, we're going to say... 90,000, I'm trying to just get it to line up here. So 90,000 times, um, what's machining, 50%? So 50 of 90. So on my calculator, I'm doing 50, hot dog, 50 divided by 90 times 90,000. So 50,000 is gonna get then allocated to machining from building and maintenance. Okay, so we allocated building and maintenance. Um, now we have to allocate factory office, right? So we allocated building and maintenance to assembly and machining. Now we need to allocate the factory office uh, expenses. And I'm just gonna underline this. Okay, so we did building and maintenance. Now we need to do um, factory office costs need to be allocated. Now I'm just going to underline it. Okay, so then it says, while factory office costs are assembled, uh, uh, factory office costs are allocated to assembly and machining on the basis of direct labor hours. So assembly is going to have 80,000 direct labor hours machining is going to have 40,000 direct labor hours. So it's a total of 120,000 direct labor hours, right? 80 plus 40. So it's a total of 120,000 direct labor hours. So then to calculate um, how we allocate this cost, we're taking, okay, um, fact, I think it was 171. I'm going to scroll back up. Yeah. So factory office was 171,000. So we're taking 171,000 ah, times. So um, I already forgot the darn square footage up here. So assembly is 80,000 out of the 120,000 square feet. So 80,000 divided by the 120, or uh, yeah, divided by the 120,000 square feet. So then assembly is gonna be allocated, what? 80 divided by 120 times 171,000. So they're gonna be allocated 114,000 of this cost. And then machining is 40,000 of the total 120,000 square feet. So we take 171,000 times 40 
divide it by 120, right? They're 40,000 out of the 120,000 square feet. So 40 divided by 120 times 171,000, 57,000 are what each of those departments are going to be allocated, right? And so we have their direct cost. We have what they're going to be allocate, uh, allocated. So we can calculate the total cost here. And maybe I'll just, instead of, well, that's okay. Total cost equals the sum of those three numbers not only their direct cost, but the portion of building and maintenance that they're allocated, um, and then the portion of um, factory office that they're allocated. Okay, so this was number one. Um, this was the direct method, direct method. Okay. And then um, number two, the sequential method. Um, we're still going to be allocating the cost to assembly and machining, right? We still have these direct costs. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this data, right? Because this data is all the same. Um, no matter what method that we're using, right? It's a matter of how we go about allocating um, allocating these. So with the sequential method, um, you know, whereas when we were allocating building and maintenance, we did not allocate any building and maintenance costs to the factory office in um, the direct method example. But with the sequential method, we are going to also allocate some to factory office. We're going to allocate some of the building maintenance to factory office and then use that total to then allocate those factory overhead costs. So um, it's a little bit funky. And actually, just remembering this, I'm going to add in um, uh, factory office here. Factory office. Okay, so direct cost of each one of these. Remember the direct cost of the factory office was 171,000. Okay, so now we're gonna allocate um, building maintenance cost first. And so building maintenance cost are 90,000. Now we're gonna allocate it to the three different uh, departments. So for, um, and I'll just copy this to save me a little bit of typing. Um, so for factory office, remember factory office takes up 10%. So then we're, we're uh, multiplying by 10%. Um, so what factory office is gonna be allocated 9,000, right? Assembly, we're taking, what assembly accounted for 40%. So then we're taking 90,000 times 40%. So assembly 90,000 times 0.4, 36,000. And then for, oops, let me copy this again. Um, for machining, machining accounts for 50% of the floor space. So then we're going to take it times 50% um, equals 90,000 times 0.5. Well, 45,000. Okay, duh. I guess I didn't need to do that on the calculator. <laughs> ah, hot dog. Okay. All right. So, um, now we have uh, basically a, a total after allocating um, building and maintenance, right? So now this um, total 
factory office. Um, and, and I guess we could go ahead and just, you know, do the totals for all of them, right? So total costs so far anyway, equals the sum of these guys. So this is before allocating factory office, right? We've got so far for factory office, um, once we allocated building and maintenance cost, uh, that brought factory office up to 180,000. That brought assembly up to 414, that brought machining up to um, 373, right? So we can see that. Now we need to allocate factory office. And so now our allocation is 180,000. Be, you know, in this one, it was 171. Those were the direct costs, but then we just allocated another nine. So now we're allocating for factory office 180,000. And again, we're multiplying it for um, assembly. Assembly takes up, or assembly rather, um, because it's based on machine hours. Assembly is going to be. 80,000 out of the 120,000 machine hours. So, and then um, I think I might have said square feet before, but it's machine hours. Um, machining is 40,000 out of the 120,000 machine hours. Okay. So now we're calculating this. We're saying, okay, 80 divided by 120 times 180,000. So we've got 120,000 here. And then for machining, 40 divided by 120 times 180,000, we've got 60,000 in costs here. Okay, so now total allocated. Equals what? This was our, yeah, I don't really like doing that. I'm just gonna say all three of these. So the direct plus what we allocated from building and maintenance, plus what we allocated from factory office. So um, direct cost for machining, plus what we allocated from building and maintenance, plus what we allocated from factory office. So, you know, you see with the kind of the bottom line figures here that, um, you know, whether we're using the direct method or the sequential method, the numbers are not different, 2000 um, a difference on each one of them. So I can't remember, I know you have one of these calculations. Um, I, I want to say that it's for the sequential method, but I can't remember 100% um, where you have to do one of these calculations and determine how much is um, allocated to which department, for example. So anyway, hopefully this helps a little bit with that. Okay, one more to do. So you guys have exercise 4-12. So I have 4-13 on here and it is um, determining job cost using the ABC method. And this is not too bad. So. It says job 19 AB required 10,000 for direct materials, um, 4,000 for direct labor, 300 direct labor hours, 150 machine hours, three material moves, and five component parts. The cost pools for each one of them follow. And so on this one, what we have to do is we have to take the direct charges, um, direct materials, direct labor, and then we have to calculate um, the overhead uh, charges. So, you know, just going by what they've told us so far, we've got direct materials equal to 10,000. We've got direct labor equal to, what, 4,000. 
And so now we need to determine what factory overhead costs are. And remember, factory overhead costs kind of always have the most uh, going on with it um, because there are several different things that can be included in overhead costs, right? So if we're looking up here, um, these are our cost pools, and this is what we're charging for each cost pool. And so um, in, instead of, you know, the ABC method, instead of using this overall predetermined overhead rate, um, we break it down into these different cost pools. So factory overhead, we've got the first one, direct labor support. And if we have, um, it tells us 300 direct labor hours and we are gonna charge $10 per direct labor hour. For direct labor support, it's gonna be 300 times $10 per hour, right? That's how we're gonna calculate this. So direct labor support um, equals 300 times 10. All right, now for machine support, uh, it's charged per machine hour. This is how we're gonna calculate this. And we had 150 machine hours according to the wording. So 150 machine hours times 15 per hour. Uh, we had material movement. And we're going to charge, we had three material moves and we're charging 350 per move on this one. And now it's going into our thing, which I don't like. I'll move the other ones. So equals um, three times 350. I'm just going to move these over one so they don't get in the way. Okay. And then finally, engineering. Engineering. Uh, 700 per component part. And this required five component parts. Right, <clears throat> so then to calculate this one equals five times 700. All right, and so all of these are currency. So they give us the dollar sign and all that jazz. And so we've got our direct cost, direct labor, um, direct materials, and now we've just calculated the factory overhead. So then we can add up our total costs. So not too bad, um, the ABC method. I mean, you know, with the predetermined overhead rate, it's kind of just one rate that you're charging to every job. Um, you, one could argue, you could argue that the ABC method is a little bit more accurate because we're um, charging it based on the actual um, production activities as opposed to just one kind of blanket overhead rate. But either way, the calculations aren't too bad. <laughs> All right, so I am going to save this and I will get this posted with um, this recorded lecture. <laughs> Hi again, everybody, and I will see you guys soon. Bye-bye.